0110 journalism. The topic is human rights problems in Russian journalism, dynamics in social political context. By the order of St. Petersburg State University, as of the 3rd of May 2018, I, Dmitry Gavra, was appointed chair of the dissertation board. Allow me to introduce my colleagues, members of the dissertation board. Vladimir Klyuev, Doctor of Political Sciences, Associate Professor of the Department of TV and Radio Journalism, Alexander Pronin, Doctor of uh, Philology, Svetlana Urazova, Doctor of Philology, Acad Academy of Media Industry. Another member of the dissertation board is Professor PhD in Political Science, Bogoslava Dobik Ostrovska. Under the federal law number 127, as of the 23rd of August 1997, on science and state scientific and technical policy of St. Uh, Petersburg State University is entitled to confer academic degrees. The corresponding order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University was issued on the 1st of September 2016. According to this order, the panel session is valid, providing two-thirds of the appointed board members are present. The total number is not to be fewer than four people. The dissertation board today consists of five people, four of which are present according to the relevant order. Therefore, we have a quorum. Let me announce the agenda of the panel session. The discussion cannot exceed two hours. The first item is the chairman's presentation about the documents submitted by the candidate for the degree and their conformity with the requirements. The chairman's reply to questions, if any. Item two. The candidate's presentation providing an overview and findings of the research, no more than 15 minutes. Item 3, questions to the candidate regarding the presentation, no more than two minutes for each question, and the candidate's replies to the questions, if any. Item 4, chair's overview of the submitted reports on the FIDES, no more than 10 minutes per person. First. Uh, the floor is given to Professor Kluyev, then Alexander Pronin, Svetlana Urazova, and I will read out the report by our colleague from Poland. Then we'll listen to the chair's report. Then we have candidates' comments about the reports in the cities, no more than 15 minutes. Then we have questions from the audience. The floor will be given to non-board attendees. They can give a brief account of their ideas, opinions, or ask questions to the candidate about their research. No more than five minutes per person. It's necessary to fill in the registration form and give their full name before the talk. Item seven, the candidate comments about the talks given by non-members presentation of the candidates. See this advisor. A five-minute break before the open balloting on conferring or non-conferring the academic degree. The discussion of the results of the defense is not broadcast. Item 10, open balloting, vote counting, by the chair and recording the results in the minutes of the session. Item 11, deciding upon conferring or not conferring the academic degree of St. Petersburg State University. And then finally, uh, the candidate's closing speech, no more than two minutes. Before we proceed with the agenda, I kindly ask the board members and attendees to switch off your mobile phones. The panel session is being broadcast.
the panel session is also being recorded and broadcast on the internet and it's being interpreted into English and Russian. So let me start with the first item of the agenda. The dissertation of Marina Matveva Melnik was submitted in conformity with the requirements set forth in the relevant order. The topic is human rights problems in Russian journalism, dynamics in social political context. Is it was duly approved for the defense. The dissertation board was set up by the order of the SPBU academic secretary and I have already introduced its members to you. The candidate has submitted the following documents to the SPBU academic secretary. Number one, an application to Professor Nikolai Kropachev, rector of SPBU, on the approval of the CITES for defense. Reports of the CITES advisor, Professor Nikolai Volkovsky. Number three, list of published works containing 11 items which describe the research findings. Six works have been published in peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education and Science. Letter of verification issued by St. Petersburg State University and certifying that Marina Matveja Melnik was enrolled in a postgraduate course at St. Petersburg State University, specialization 10.0.1.10, journalism. She also passed uh, the qualifying exams in journalism, history of philosophy and science, and the foreign language. She also submitted a university, a copy of university diploma, a specialist degree in law. This in Russian and English, a printed version uh, with a manuscript copyright and a digital copy. The CITES format in reference list comply with the state standard. Let me underscore that the above mentioned documents comply with item 12 of section 3 of the order on granting academic degrees in St. Petersburg State University. Is anyone present? Uh, does anyone present have any questions? No questions. So then the floor is given to Magina Matveva Melnik to report the results of her study. You only have 15 minutes. Distinguished Chairman distinguished members of the dissertation board, members of the audience. I would like to introduce my dissertation under the title Human Rights Problems in Russian Journalism, Dynamics and Sociopolitical Context, submitted in compliance uh, with the requirements to the candidate of sciences in journalism. Today, mass media has a huge impact on the society, the information presented by mass media is vested in humans mind thus making it indispensable to uh, social communication including human rights and other political functions therefore it is important to encapsulate it in a scientific way i mean the topics covered by mass media as well as its traditions including what makes so special the publications on human rights activism. The key hypothesis is that human rights activism in Russian mass media develops according to social and political processes that are ongoing in the society. The object of the research is Russian mass media on human rights activism and the subject of research is the human rights context in social and political dynamics. The objective of my thesis is to comprehensively describe Russian uh, HR activism in mass media in social and political context. To this end, the following goals have been delivered on. 
to justify the human rights activism as a function of Russian journalism, to analyze the structure and the content of human rights activism, media, and to analyze the current topics, as well as how it is impacted by social and political setting. The chronological time frame encapsulates from January 2018 to January 2017. The empirical foundation are the publications of the following newspapers. St. Petersburg Vedomosti, Izvestia, Kommersant, St. Petersburg uh, Vedomosti, and others. First and foremost, we were guided by the authority of mass media sources, as well as their geographical coverage, the number of issues published, and the coverage of audience. I would like to describe, in short, each of these newspapers. Rossiska Gazeta is an official newspaper that publishes decrees and laws. Once those are enforced, which means that these documents are published every day in 44 cities of Russia. There are offices in Europe and Asia, and the number of issues is over 185,000. So this newspaper is distributed by over 110 enterprises, as well as by embassies and representatives of Russia across various countries. The Vedomosti is a daily business newspaper that analyzes current affairs, local as well as international. It has been published as of 1999, five times a week, and is distributed across all constituents of Russia. The number of issues is 75,000, and the audience is over 181,000 people with 2.5 million internet users. This newspaper has been there for over 30 years. It is published six times a week. I mean, the Commerçant newspaper, it publishes financial and business news and covers key events in culture and sport. It also publishes notes on bankruptcy of enterprises. It is distributed in many large cities of Russia, 125,000 number of issues and over 20,000 of members of the audience. The Vesti was established in 1917 and it has been there for over a century. It covers the events across the world in all areas of social life, over 150,000 numbers, 3,200,000 new users visit its website every month. So the editors are well-known people. Those are experts in relevant areas, and therefore their articles are so much demanded. Those were Anatoly Gronovsky, Tatiana Tess, and others. The ranking of these newspapers is high as well. You can see the ranking of Media Logia Company, one of the leading companies in automatic monitoring development and mass media information analysis in real time. Over July 2018, this ranking of most cited newspapers includes all the four newspapers that we have selected, and they take the top four. A similar ranking was published in February this year and over the last years while my research was on. So which means that the selected newspapers are the primary sources of information for Russian society. The empirical foundation of my thesis is the regional publishing house, St. Petersburgsky Vedomosti, which is daily distributed in the northwest of Russia and has the largest audience in the dedicated region. The number of readers for every issue is over 153,000 people. According to the official information, every 
third reader belongs to a middle class, which means that every fifth reader is in top management. This newspaper is uh, enjoyed by the governor's uh, press service and the members of the Legislative Assembly. We selected, uh, we did a sampling as of 2011 until 2017 that includes over uh, 4,000 text units. So oh, we uh, ascribed this publication as human uh, rights activism, provided that those described violations of human rights or analysis of legislation or reflected some social and political processes, described some cases of human rights activism as or activities of courts or sanctions against law violators or human rights uh, organizations or any cases of interaction between a person and the state related to human rights or relevant commentaries by human rights activists or legislators who anyhow have something to do with uh, protection of human rights. So to have some vivid information, we also did some interviews with representatives of human rights activists and the police to have a more dedicated analysis of the information represented by St. Petersburg Vedomosti newspapers. Such a direct, frank dialogue allowed us to understand how contemporary journalists understand mass media and its function in human rights activism. What are the impediments and what makes such publications successful? The results are reflected in the appendices to my dissertation. I also refer to the positions of those who participated in these interviews and other personal information. My thesis also refers to archives, web sources, documents on human rights activism as a journalist code of conduct, as well as international documents on human rights. This thesis is innovative because for the first time it analyzes comprehensively human rights activism as a trend in journalism. I introduce the definition to the term of human rights journalism and establish outlined traditions of Russian human rights journalism. These are the outcomes and the main conclusions of my thesis. Human rights journalism is a separate, dedicated area that covers human rights activism and initiative to restitute human rights and freedoms. This means that a journalist directly participates in the restitution of human rights indirectly by assisting to promote these ideas, which means that it is not just a formal coverage, but it is interaction with the future heroes of the publication, with the opponents, proponents, experts. This facilitates the process of, to collect the evidence of whether some individual is guilty or non-guilty. I believe that such mainstreaming of human rights activism can have a huge impact. Most successful cases are when a specific publication turns into action. One of the key prerequisites is that such a journalist has to be well qualified in a dedicated area. Russian human rights journalism is very closely related to the human rights activism in Russia overall. 
these relations are uh, rather tricky, which results in a consensus by way of joint effort. The objective of such a consensus is to produce some mass media text that can impact the opinions of R Russian society and the Russian mind. Civil journalism allows us to bolster interaction between NGOs and mass media. Human rights activism is one of the key topics in Russian media today, both federal and local. Some publications include many facts, whereas others are more analytical. Many of them include some useful information on how to protect your rights, where to address, how to file an application properly, and what legislation to refer. Federal mass media is dominated by analytical publications. To be able to publish articles on human rights, a dedicated education is a plus. However, practical skills are equally relevant. The main impediment is lack of dedicated experience and knowledge. Therefore, such a journalist has to possess a number of professional qualities, must be very well informed in law, and have some experience in interaction with law enforcement authorities, human rights activists, and other sources of information. Therefore, the main hypothesis has been proved Human rights activism in Russian journalism is developing in compliance with social and political processes in Russia. My thesis has been drafted according to the plan of my department of mass communications of St. Petersburg State University. It includes three chapters in an introduction and a conclusion as well as 24 appendices. Some of those are presented as a table analyzing the content of publications on human rights activism. Specific findings of my thesis have been presented at several Russian and international conferences and enjoyed fellow support. I have three articles published in in the journal recommended by the Higher Attestation Commi Commission, and the author of the thesis has been awarded a prize of a competition staged by the concept journal. I also participated in seminars where I presented the results of my research. And today I'm happy to share them. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Marina, for observing the time. Distinguished members of the dissertation board, did you have any questions related to the dissertation? Please do not forget to switch on your mics and to introduce yourself. Sergei Kluyev, member of the dissertation board, doctor of political sciences. My question is as follows. What made you look into this uh, issue. What are your key works apart from those mentioned? What's your background in this area? Thank you. Thank you so much for the question. Well, according to my credentials, I'm a lawyer, but I always favored journalism more than law. I, I desired just to choose a topic that would embrace both of my two favorite fields, 
law and journalism. I had a conversation with my research supervisor, who was not my research supervisor in those times, and therefore we decided to choose this topic, to look at human rights and how human rights activism is presented in Russian mass media. So there were two drivers actually behind my choice, the uniquenesses of this field and my background. More questions. I follow up to the first question. So you have two higher degrees. Svetlana Razova, member of the dissertation board. Well, journalism is a multidisciplinary area today to you. Is it possible for a journalist without having a dedicated degree in law as you do, is it possible for a journalist to get engaged into issues related to human rights? Because this means not only some descriptive stuff, but also some evidence-based knowledge. Thank you. Svetlana Razova. I believe that it is possible, so absence of a dedicated degree is not an obstacle. What is important is practice, continuous practical experience. No diploma would be a proper substitution for practical skills, provided that a journalist is actively engaged into conversations with experts and relevant people and is not averse to such interaction, to embracing new knowledge and covering new unknown topics. Of course, time is necessary, but my experience is quite humble in human rights journalism. I talked to journalists who wrote the uh, articles that I based my findings on. So you believe that the communicative skills specific to a journalist can compensate for absence of a relevant degree. But the most important thing is to be meticulous and to be all ears. More questions? Uh, the question on behalf of the chairman, Dmitry Gavra. I have several questions. Your empirical research, when you selected text for analysis, what is there behind this time frame? And how did you choose the experts? What is behind such a choice? Did you do some encoding? And why don't you have relevant information on the encoding uh, devices in your dissertation? Well, I started my research as of the end of 2011. It is then that I started to sample publications. As for the choice of experts, could you please clarify what experts do you mean? Well, you have, you've got interviews with experts. Those are experts, aren't they? Oh, you mean the interviews? Yes, right, the interviews. Those are expert interviews, right? Now I got it. Well, as for the interviews, I looked into the publications that cover joint efforts by the society and human rights activists. And therefore, it was important for me to discuss these issues with uh, all the relevant people. Mariana Torichevshnikova, the host of a human rights program She's a journalist. She participated in court cases. And therefore, I think that 
she was a credible expert to participate in an interview. I also uh, talked to uh, secretaries of two human rights activism organizations. And it was important for me to find out what are the obstacles that they encounter. As for the ombudsman, it was important for me to find out about the experience of a member of the authority. And it, he provided me with ample relevant information on how journalists behave sometimes. As for the ombudsman for the Leningrad region, well, uh, Professor Dobrik Ostrovska asked this question in her review. It is the ombudsman of the Leningrad region in particular because I wanted to focus on a smaller uh, territory. Therefore, it was so exciting for me to talk to a person who operates in this particular area. As for journalists representing the St. Petersburgsky Vedomosti. Well, thank you very much. Everything is clear about that. And now my question on content analysis on the encoding book. Well, the the encoding book is was not there in my dissertation, so this is something something which. which is the future perspective. So I ha failed to come up with a book of that kind. More questions, colleagues? Alexander Fronin, Doctor of Philological Sciences. Your fundamental hypothesis is about human rights journalism and its uh, development against social and political processes. How do you envision the dynamics of these social and political processes in Russia? And how do those, how are those echoed by human rights journalism? Thank you. Well, thank you for your question. Initially, I uh, came across many publications on human rights protection because it is exactly in those times that lots of rallies erupted. Those were the cases for 2012 until the mid-2013, as I observed, and then the content shifted towards the social dimension. And this is observed actually from my results. And this is what I find most exciting and important. Then I would like to ask for some clarification. Does Is it tailored to social and political processes overall? How would you name these processes then? Could you please clarify your question? How would you define the social and political processes that comply with this trend? Well, once some political transformations occur in a country, this impacts the content of mass media. If these processes are subdued, then the content changes, respectively. Thank you. Distinguished members of the dissertation board, do you have any other questions? To the defendant, once there are no questions, please take a seat and we proceed to the reviews. According to the procedure, I have to announce all the reviews, including external reviews. No external reviews have been submitted. Thus, we proceed to announcing the reviews submitted by members of the dissertation board. Doctor of Political Sciences, docent, Yuri Kluiv, thank you. Distinguished chairman, distinguished members of the dissertation board, guests, 
just to save time, I would like to read out my report. The dissertation submitted by Matveva, Marina Matveva Melnik is devoted to human rights journalism as one of the key aspects of analytical journalism and mass media. The relevance of the dissertation is obvious because any individual requires protection of his or her rights, provided that relevant authorities and law enforcement agencies fail in this respect or are incompetent. A journalist is compelled to find out the truth, to expose the truth, as well as knowledge on promoting human rights and resolving issues related to this area. Thus, a journalist is an intermediary between violators of human rights and freedoms, hearers of his or her publications, as well as the society. A journalist is, is an advocate of social justice, which makes his function all the more relevant. A word in favor of human rights is an important contribution to human rights activism and their mainstreaming. The ability of a journalist to protect human rights is vested in journalists' duties. And the success of a journalist depends on how dedicated this journalist is in his or her efforts. The benefits of these findings are the meticulous analysis of legal uh, texts and uh, scientific literature, as well as the historical perspective, the uh, chronology of human rights journalism in Russia, the dissidents, the post-Soviet times. Chapter 3 is most relevant in this respect. Chapter 3 analyzes the topics and the genres of human rights journalism in Russia, as well as the topics in the St. Petersburgsky of the Edomosti newspaper. The appendix includes the frequency of specific collocations related to human rights activism, the questionnaire, and the interview with Mr. Nikitin, the director of Russian Office of International Human Rights Organization, Amnesty International, interview with Mr. Tora Ch Madam Tora Chenikova, the host of A Human Being Has a Right, who works at Radio Svoboda, interview with Mr. Shabanov, and interviews with other journalists. I focus not occasionally on the appendix because this makes this dissertation a piece of philological finding. And I think that the, app the appendices could produce a chapter four, an independent chapter four. But I think this is the perspective, perspective for the future. And I should also focus on some drawbacks. Those can be grouped by the following aspects. In some cases, uh, readers have a feeling that human rights journalism, whatever the epoch, 
is considered to be an indispensable part of human rights activism. It is not like that always. The empirical data compelled to have a more detailed structure of human rights issues. It would be better to, f to start with that, to start with the structure of human rights ex issues, and then proceed to empirical data. So once again, this is a recommendation for future research. I also would like to focus on the fact that To me, it is a mistake to label all aspects of social and political life as human rights issues. It is unclear what does the author mean by claiming that human rights journalism is identical to civil journalism and co-participatory journalism. Once again, we are in a trap of mixing some terms. I mean, protecting human rights in political context and civil journalism overall. Once we start to label this type of journalism as civil journalism, once specific democrat democratic transformations has arrived to Russia, co-participatory journalism, once again, I, it's clear where the roots of these terms are. But I believe that this type of journalism mainstreams national issues or international issues or social protection issues. How, how does that comply with what you claim in your thesis? So these various types of journalism, the civil journalism, the participatory journalism, and human rights journalism, how accurate these labels are applied in your dissertation? Is it possible to consider human rights journalism as some creative activity? I believe that the concept is broader than is presented in your dissertation. But once again, this is something to be done in the future. And two more recommendations. Sometimes there is a demand for a deeper analysis of human rights issues. Instead of this analysis, the defendant turns a cold, a cold shoulder on these issues, escaping this analysis and the analysis of current human rights journalism. The dissertation overlooks social issues that have to be analyzed against the setback of contemporary transformations that the Russian society has undergone. And this recommendation overlaps with one of the questions asked. Your dissertation would have benefited from a better analysis of the ideas, concepts of te represented in texts, and this would have made your dissertation a better piece of philological analysis. Although the philological dimension and philological tools are there, and it is uh, a full-fledged dissertation, despite the recommendations, I should note that the dissertation is very well drafted, and it delivers on the objectives and aims. All the drawbacks could be resolved 
when the defendant publishes this dissertation. Despite the recommendations, this dissertation is a value, it is a contribution into journalism as a science. Therefore, the dissertation submitted by Marina Matveyeva Melnik under the title Human Rights Problems in Russian Journalism, Dynamics and Sociopolitical Context is in compliance with the relevant requirements stipulated in the dedicated decree on the academic degrees of boarding procedure in St. Petersburg State University, whereas the defendant Marina Matveyeva Melnik deserves to be awarded the applied academic decree in journalism specialty field 10010. Thank you. I would like now to give the floor to member of the dissertation board, Alexander Pronin, uh, assistant professor of the communicative journalism department. A distinguished colleagues, human rights is a priority for every democratic society. For new Russia that has been undergoing complicated transformations, human rights are a key issue. And the contemporary mass media discloses the successes in this respect. And we see that there is a lot to be done down the road. The relevance of the dissertation is no doubt. It, it is devoted to contemporary journalism. The analysis is very deep, and we can see it by the bibliography. The defendant understands the complicacy of all the concepts and the way they are related. Those concepts include the tradition of lo Russian journalism, human rights activism and its historical background, as well as the publications devoted to human rights. The first chapter covers uh, human rights journalism as a scientific concept. It also explains the terminology and the such a term as human rights function, thus coming up with the definition that human rights journalism is a specific independent topic that studies restitution of human rights and freedoms. The uh, defendant also covers the drawbacks in rules and regulations and referring to some cases of human rights violations as well as the activities of courts, sanctions, the actions of uh, individual civilians, and some examples of interaction between the state and the society related to human rights, page 26-27. The dissertation highlights that this area is no different from political, medical, health care, or environmental issues. The second chapter is a short review of the current standing. The dissertation outlines three stages in 20th and 21st century the Soviet, the post-Soviet, and the post-Perestroika. The last uh, chapter is most relevant. The author says that three ideological streams can be identified, the American, the Americanism, the cosmopolitan, and the patriots, which impacts highly human rights activism practices. The third chapter, which is the most bulky and most analytical one, analyzes the current publications in newspapers and uh, by referring to 
the general content analysis as identified. The object of the research includes articles from the above mentioned newspapers and the key parameters of these newspapers are as follows. Analysis of rules and regulations, human rights issues, reflection of the social and political environment, specific cases of human rights activism, cases of human rights violation, activities by courts and relevant authorities, the sanctions, so on and so forth. The analysis covers three aspects, the topics of human rights journalism, human rights topics of the St. Petersburgsky Vedomosti newspapers, and overall covering over 4,000 uh, textual units. The third chapter has no conclusion as opposite to chapter one and chapter two. Nevertheless, there is the general takeaways claiming that the federal mass media is dominated by analytical publications so as not to inform on some cases of violation, but also to expose the roots of such violations. In conclusion, the dissertation, the dissertation integrates the above mentioned statements claiming that Russian journalism is developing in accordance with social and political processes in Russian society. This makes this dissertation a comprehensive piece of research. Its key, the key advantages of the dissertation are as follows. It, it develops and integrates in, uh, in an integral comprehensive text uh, ample data on the uh, topic, the analysis is very deep. This dissertation is a discussion, therefore it exposes the various opinions and contradicts them. The fourth benefit is that the, this dissertation is a promise and it has a perspective, and this makes it highly relevant. However, there are some uh, drawbacks that invalidate the dissertation. It is too descriptive. It is rather an overview than a meticulous analysis or a proper comparison of texts published in various newspapers. Once again, I reiterate that each newspaper is covered in a specific paragraph. This makes this dissertation and its conclusions trivial. The author has also overlooked an opportunity to include any newspaper that belongs to the opposition, the Novaya Gazeta, Medusa, Slova, and other sources, web sources, not to mention the websites of human rights organizations mentioned in paragraph 3.2. I believe that this indeed invalidates the dissertation. By reducing the scope to the so-called high-quality press, the, uh, the author weakened the conclusions, claiming that human rights journalism is a specific area of journalism. So this undermines this conclusion. Nevertheless, the dissertation is evidence-based 
and it is an important contribution to the current research. And therefore, the dissertation submitted by Marina Matveeva Melnik, Human Rights Problems in Russian Journalism, Dynamics in Social Political Context, is in compliance with the dedicated decree. The defendant, uh, Marina Matveeva Melnik, deserves to be awarded this bioacademic degree in specialty 10010. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to Svetlana Urazova, who represents the Media Industry Academy. Thank you so much, distinguished, distinguished chairman, distinguished members of the dissertation board, to distinguished colleagues, and members of the audience. I'll be short. My review has been published on the St. Petersburg University official website and lots of aspects have already been mentioned. The dissertation by Marina Matveva Melnik is highly relevant. It is a valuable piece of research because it covers a variety of aspects. First one, the genesis of human rights uh, movements in Russia. the cause and effect between these activities and human rights organizations that later emerged into institutions. Human rights journalism and its function in informing the society on current affairs, as well as the very term of human rights journalism. These aspects are covered in the dissertation, page six. I would like to deviate towards discussing what I have heard at the oral presentation. I believe that journalism is undergoing profound transformations. Therefore, to analyze such issues as human rights protection, human freedoms protection, one has to be very well updated about what's going on in this area. I believe that as a bachelor student, students of the third year have to be presented with relevant uh, texts so as to be able to, to put forward some very solid findings. Therefore, at the Faculty of Journalism, I believe that there is a demand for such a specialty field. On page 12, the author claims that such a comprehensive analysis is done for the first time this is unarguable. However, the defendant depicts the human rights newspapers in a very meticulous way by profiling them very closely and drawing attention to various aspects. So this makes this dissertation so original in terms of its uh, scholarly findings. What's more, the defendant focuses on the fact that mass media is independent from socio-political contexts. And therefore, this is the basis for the cause and effect to prove this hypothesis, the uh, defendant prefers to ample empirical uh, units, uh, over 660 uh, positions in the bibliography, so which makes this uh, dissertation uh, on par with a doctoral dissertation. The content analysis is uh, philological, and this has been highlighted by members of the dissertation board. 
internet websites have, have not been overlooked. The dissertation includes four expert interviews. It is indeed there. Ultimately, the analysis is topped up by 17 tables and one diagram and the author's questionnaire, page 267315. So the amount of empirical data is enormous. It's enormous indeed. The numbers that are there do not invalidate the prior traditions. So this means that this is a solid piece of research with the highly relevant results. It is an independent research that looks into the evolution of human rights activism in Russia, human rights journalism, until now. And this justifies the cultural tradition that brings together uh, human rights activism, as said on page 303. I would like to especially focus on the bibliometrical analysis of words. I was so much impressed by these tables because they present such a meticulous, su such a thorough analysis. I join the opinion of members of the dissertation board that these tables deserve to be included in the main body of the dissertation and not in the appendix. Next. It is no doubt that one of the main conclusions is valuable. I mean, the conclusion on the fact that human rights journalism is an independent stream and a specific aspect of journalism as a profession. Chapter one. And yes, indeed. Here we can outline not only civil journalism, but also technological journalism, engineering journalism, whatever. Today, this system is undergoing fundamental transformations. So here, I disagree with the defendant, because I believe that communication and ability to communicate is insufficient for a proper journalist for a full-fledged journalist. Description is not enough. What is required is analysis. And therefore, journalism, journalists have to be well informed about what they're writing. In this respect, this dissertation is highly valuable. I support the uh, fact that the Human rights journalism in Russia can be split into three stages, the Soviet, the post-Soviet, and the dissident. The way how members of uh, human rights organization assess the, their arguments with the mass media is highly val valuable, post-Soviet Russia is uh, is characterized by the fact that human rights activists emerge into observers and ombudsmen, and this means that the scope of their obligations is broader, including social rights protection, human rights protection, and guarantees. interpersonal and mass media communications thanks to the technological revolutions and digital technologies as well as the contradiction between the society the uh, social morale as well as the government
Yes, indeed. There are lots of contradictions, and therefore it is important to know the subjects that you are writing about. The analysis of uh, topics and genres presented in human rights newspapers is highly, valu is highly valuable. I believe that these aspects are largely overlooked today in the scholarly tradition. Therefore, this makes this dissertation so valuable. It also focuses on some statistics and by finding out that analytical genres dominate, whereas some fiction genres are almost oosted to, to the margin. This conclusion is very well evidence-based. Another conclusion that today journalists lack knowledge in human rights protection and in human freedoms as well as relevant legislation is indeed true. So this means that this dissertation introduces a specific specialty field. Now I would like to focus on some drawbacks. The dissertation demonstrates some drawbacks, regrettably. The groups that represent the three stages of human rights journalism is indeed a subject of discussion. This reminded me on a so sociological survey where just some boy gangs were uh, classified and this does not conform with the human rights activism. Sometimes the author is too personal about cosmopolitanism, although in the 20th century this uh, term has a negative understanding, and it is there until now. Therefore, I think it would be more useful to call this group as internationalist, not cosmopolit. This is what the logic says, as well as the interpretation of this term, its definition dates back to the Soviet tradition. The dissidents, instead of Americanists would be more favorable name. So just due to the historical background, the Soviet Union and international uh, journals, as well as Mr. Gershunia, who was one of the most prominent human rights a activists. He was uh, kept in a psychiatric hospital unjustly because he was unfavored by the government. My next recommendation is the refers to the term sum is that self public publishing or homemade publishing. This means that manuscripts were produced or reprinted or copied So there is some distinction after all. Actually, in Soviet times, when publications were published or copied, this was indeed called homemade publishing houses. So today, such term as self-publishing is widely there. Another recommendation is that both dissertation includes 315 pages of text. The thing is that the overall volume of uh, a candidate a dissertation is up to 200 pages, whereas here 
there is some superfluous of data. I mean, the fact that you describe papers that are very well known, or oh, possibly we do not know the number of issues published and other details, but this description could be shorter. Overall, the dissertation submitted by Marina Matveyeva Melnik under the title Human Rights Problems in Russian Journalism, Dynamics and Sociopolitical Context is in conformity with the relevant decrees stipulated in the decree on academic degree awarding procedure in St. Petersburg State University by Rev. the defendant Marina Matveva Melnik deserves to be awarded the inspired academic degree of Candidate of Sciences in Philology in the Specialty Field 10.01.10 Journalism. Thank you. Thank you, Svetlana. The Professor Boguslava Dobikostrovska is absent. Therefore, me as a chairman would like to declare her review the review is written in English, so I would like to omit some paragraphs, but I would like to highlight the most important things. Thank you for switching on the light. Number one, choice of, of the PhD dissertation topic. Uh, Marina Gennadyevna Matveva Melnik choice of the topic is a human rights journalism in the Russia in the context of social political dynamics where her doctoral thesis is permanent, needed, and important from a cognitive and practical point of view. For this reason, I find that the topic is pertinent and needed. It could be an important contribution to the scholarly question defined in the title of the reviewed dissertation. But I know well that to do a research dedicated to human rights in the authoritarian media system is very difficult and risky. As Matveva Miltik indicates, the main uh, aim of his study is to give the substantive evaluation of the human rights agenda in Russian journalism with the reference to the social-political context. Uh, the author presents six main tasks, and then the reviewer gives the number of these tasks, and then puts the question how it works in the dissertation of Maria Matveva Melnik. Uh, point two, methodology. The methodology used in each study fulfills the requirements for a doctoral, uh, doctoral thesis. The methods used by a PhD student is a fundamental aspect of each dissertation because it confirms or not a level of scientific development of candidate for an independent research. In an introduction, each author should point out elements that are necessary for an academic dissertation, the aim of study and its hypothesis. Then is the, comes the quotation about the hypothesis and the aim of the study. And then the reviewer, the member of the, of the scientific council, makes the conclusion that in a case of qualitative research, I see that the author knows how to use and she did it correctly. Uh, there are four interviews. Now the names of the interviewed persons are named, and they are uh, fulfilled in a pure, uh, proper way. Generally, as I have mentioned, the qualitative methods are correctly used and documented. But I have one doubt linked with the selection of one participant of the interview, an ombudsman for human rights in the Leningrad region. The author writes clearly that the period of research is from 2011-2015. The name of Leningrad was used in the other period. A real problem appears in the context of the quantitative research of uh, Matveev Melnik. Uh, they also counted in percent articles, in percent articles, notice, and interviews published in four newspapers, Rossiyskaya Gazeta, Kemersant, Zvezhti, Vedomosti, and newspapers in general. But the reader doesn't doesn't know how the empirical materials were selected and what many publications uh, were analyzed in the period from January 2011 to January 2017. 17. 
The author underlines that this choice was dictated by a credibility, it's a quotation, a credibility and proved relevance among the readers, circulation geography, frequency of publication, average issue readership, coverage and profile of the audience of sources. The titles like Vedomosti Kamera Santis Vesti Rasiske Gazeta, it means for newspapers, have been analyzed. But in the third chapter, she writes above all about the human rights topic presented by only one newspaper, Sambirus Vedomosti. Additionally, the table shows a shorter time, and now the reviewer speaks about this shorter time in details. No doubt, it's a conclusion for this section of the, of the reference, no doubt that the author did a heavy job, but the quantitative methods were not used well in each case. The author does not add to the dissertation a coding book, and she does not explain how she received all analyzed data presented in 17 tables and one diagram. And then in the section three, uh, the reviewer, Professor De Bekostrovska, uh, reveals the whole detailed uh, reveals the content of the dissertation, describing each chapter from one to another. And finally, the main uh, uh, attention is paid to the third chapter, the Teptichet, subject and genres of human rights publications concerning the modern Russian press, is the biggest. It takes about 50% of all PhD dissertation, decisions text. Matveva mainly concentrates her attention on three main threads, uh, the thematic areas of human rights problems in quality of Russian editions, the human rights topics of the newspapers and which works very musty, and the general system of human rights journalism. I guess how difficult it is to do research dedicated to the newspaper, listen, where Vladimir Putin was the first chairman of its advisory board, 1995-1997. Then there is quotation for the author. In the last uh, position of the chapter three, Matveva Melnik concludes that the analytical materials dedicated to the general system of human rights journalism predominate in the federal and regional place. There are a lot of materials about reporting a human rights violation, and the artistic and general journals in post-Soviet human rights journalism have disappeared from the press, as the other reviewers have already mentioned. I like a construction and structure of the conclusion. It is clear and well-organized part of the dissertation and can be a model for all the authors, uh, for the other authors. At the beginning, uh, Matveva Melnik answers for six tasks, and the next she presents eight main conclusions. Final remarks. It's a damage that the author doesn't, does not know some important monographs and articles dedicated to Russia, such as chapter of Yelena Vartanova, the Russian media model in the context of post-Soviet dynamics, published in the collective book of Helen and Mancini of 2012. It is significant analysis. One part of this text is dedicated to the formal uh, media laws and informal norms. Svetlana Pasti, 2015, and also uh, Charos and Swedish, 2012, and Northern Strength, 2013, presented interesting research dedicated to Russia and the conclusions could develop deeply a study of Matveva Melnik. What should be particularly stressed and appreciated that this work is the empirical research and it implemented various methods. Conclusions. In general, I do not feel a complete reviewer to appreciate of this PhD thesis. I can appreciate the used methodology and my opinion is positive. But I do not know the content of analyzed, analyzed newspapers and I cannot evaluate the new aspects of a problem of human rights in Russian journalism. It's the quotation from the dissertation. But in our final conclusion, I think that this thesis fulfills the principles required by the Russian PhD system and I recommend the dissertation of Matveva Melnik to proceed to the next stage of the PhD program. Signature of Mrs. Uh, Professor PhD Depe Kostrovska Bogoslava. Итак, мы заслушали отзыв положительный, как мы слышали, Депе Кастровск. So the report was generally positive, and in conclusion, I would like to uh, announce my report it's also uploaded on the SPBU website in my report I state that the topic is relevant and it's of practical value the structure is logical it's well written 
the contents is delivered in three chapters. The CDES is well written, it's logical. It unfolds logically and fulfills all the purposes and objectives. Then I provide an overview of the content of the dissertation. The first chapter focuses on the methods to study human rights problems in journalism. It provides definitions of basic terms, defines its subject and object. In general, I agree and I accept the approaches offered by the candidate. However, it gives rise to some questions. In section two of the first chapter, the candidate focuses on the historical method and provides an overview of the historical approaches to human rights problems by Russian journalism. Here I have doubts about the title of the section. Human rights function as a creative trend of Russian, as a creative tradition of Russian journalism. We have to really distinguish between a function and a tradition. A function is a social action. Maybe by function, the author meant an implementation of the function. And it's not very clear why it's a creative tradition. Rather, it's a social or a political tradition. In the text itself, we don't find anything about uh, creative methods or uh, any creativity. The author is very careful when analyzing historical facts and data. The second chapter bases itself on content analysis of four le re leading Russian newspapers and one original edition. It's indicative of the candidate's linguistic skills. She can thoroughly analyze information and provide relevant conclusions. Section three of chapter two is of special value. The composition of the dissertation is in line of the purpose and objectives of the study highlighted in the introduction. Empirical data is ample. The dissertation is logical. Now, let me give some critical remarks on this video. One question is about the human rights journalism. She defines human rights journalism is a sphere of activity which focuses on human rights violations. I suppose it limits human rights journalism. Why does it aim to reinstate violated rights? What about informing the citizens um, about some recent trends in human rights agenda? I can give my personal definition of human rights journalism. Human rights journalism should focus on supporting human rights. Another question that arises here is about the definition of human rights function of journalism. It's participation of a journalist in protecting human rights. No function of journalism can lie in a journalist participating in something. A journalism is a sphere of professional activity. It's a system of practices which has its social, 
political functions. It's an institution. The definition should have been different. My second remark, it's again about the author's definition about human rights journalism in line with its historical analysis. Here, the definition is too broad. The candidate regards Sumerokov Radishev, which is with his criticism of serfdom and even Pushkin's uh, edition as human rights editions. I believe that opinion journalism and this criticism of serfdom of those years had a humanistic function. They were aiming to shape values, to enhance morale in a number of texts concerned political journalism. It's a different discourse and a different problem that some other research should solve. It's the domain of social, political, and economical journalism. Take the case of Kyrgyz Srebrenikov. Political journalism can sometimes disguise itself as human rights journalism. Some human rights discourse can be used to solve uh, political agenda issues. I remember, uh, they called the case of Angela Davis. So you have to really differentiate between human rights problems and political agenda of journalists. These are complex issues, and the candidate hasn't started tackling them yet. The third remark. Sergei Smirnov's work, The Breast Fortress, is referred to as human rights journalism by Marina Matvey Melnik. Uh, these programs, these TV programs, were very popular with the Russian audience. It's not about human rights problems, that's about commemorating soldiers who died during the war. It's sometimes not clear how the texts are referred to as uh, human, right, human rights texts. For example, an, a newspaper article about the initiative of deputies about a pension reform is regarded as a human rights article. This is a ground for doubt and misunderstanding. I also have a question about some additions that you included. For some additions, you don't provide information about the owners, uh, the readership, the circulation. However, the study is still very valuable, both practically and theoretically. This is by Marina Mateo Melnik, Human Rights Problems in Russian Journalism, Dynamics in Social Political Context, is novel, it can find practical application, and it complies with the major requirements set forth in the relevant order, and Marina Matvey Melnik can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. You now have about 15 minutes to answer the questions or provide your comments. You're welcome. First off, I'd like to thank all the members of the Distation Board for their interest in my study. Thanks for regarding my study as really novel. 
I'm thankful for the recommendations. My answers are in line with the chronological steps of my research. I agree with Professor Cover, and I should have provided a broader definition of the term human rights journalism. It's a sphere of activity which focuses on the coverage of issues that with the aim to reinstate human rights and inform audiences on the human rights agenda. Next question is about civil journalism and human rights journalism. Civil journalism Here we have people like you and I from the street who provide coverage of some events. They are not professional journalists. The core of human rights journalism are professionals, professional journalists. If a citizen has a blog and he covers human rights issues and he is really good at it, then we can regard him as a human rights journalist. So civil journalism is just an alternative, non-standard type of journalism. It's a novel approach to human rights issues. This is what makes civil journalism and human rights journalism similar. Still, human rights journalism is a creative activity. It has its own object and subject and focus. Here, professionals work in line with their special topic. So professional journalism and human rights journalism as well is not pure creativity. It's a professional activity. The next question is about the title of a section. Kirillin believes that human rights function is not a novel function. For many years, journalism has been standing for the humiliated and the offended. A German philosopher, Ademer, says that a tradition is about retaining something that we already have. So we find it feasible to combine these two concepts of tradition of a tradition and creativity. Whatever time we live in, journalists are there to stand for human rights. Human rights function appeared in Russia when some journalists appeared who started writing about these issues. As a mass phenomenon, it started developing at the end of the 20th century due to an unprecedented growth of mass media. An example is a paper called Deo Tritipet. There, a journalist conducted his own investigation. He met the locals in a village he visited um, a prosecutor in Moscow. He went through the courts. This story had a happy ending due to the journalist's effort as well. 
journalists. Certainly work in collaboration with other institutions. Now the question about section 1.2. We do not regard those editions and publications by Sumerokov and Redishchev as human rights publications. They were purely humanistic in their approach. However, for them, it was important to write about humanity, to write about morality, to protect simple people from abuse. So Karolinka and Dorashevich still were focusing on human rights agenda, and they wrote about the violation of human rights. Next question is about human rights discourse in other branches of journalism. It would sometimes take political publications. For example, that case of a housewife um, Davidova, or some other, which uh, I feature in my cities. Here, people could find freedom, largely to the journalistic coverage. I was mostly interested in how these events were covered in mass media. Then the next question is about Konstantin Simonov and Smirnov. Is that justifiable to refer them to as human rights journalism? In those days, the values uh, of frontmates and uh, the commemoration of the memory of soldiers was really important. However, if we are talking about treating former soldiers and veterans of war justly, then there were two ways to do that. Sergei Smirnov did a lot to reinstate the rights of the former defendants of the Brest Fortress, as well as the rights of some other veterans of law who did not receive awards or medals for what they had done, and they had done a lot. Here I quote, they were depressed but over the time, they would smile happily because their rights were reinstated. Konstantin Simonov wrote a lot about these issues too. There were a lot of veterans who wrote to him asking to help them reinstate their rights. Of course, this is indirect help of a journalism due to his high profile and uh, his name, his publicity, he could help those people. Self-publishing is a kind of an independent um, sort of home-based uh, publishing. It takes place when authors do not cooperate with editing, uh, with editors' houses, publishing houses, for some reason, and they publish their works independently and then distribute that. We regarded self-publishing as the first wave of human rights journalism in Russia authors or readers created copies of works 
without obtaining relevant permission from authorities. In those days, self-publishing meant uncontrollable publishing. Another question is we often regard human rights issues covered in journalism as part of human rights movements. That's true. We focused on human rights issues in journalism as part of human rights activism in Russia. Human rights activists, activism are well aware that they are not able to be effective if they do not have support from journalism. So they often organize collaborative events. Some human rights organizations set up their own mass media editions or uh, mass media outlets. Human rights journalism covers uh, the activity of human rights activists. It makes it well known. These two uh, trends are coexisting and they foster each other's development. The next question is about cosmopolitanism. We kept to the terms used by Alek Popov, who used them in his paper. Some time has passed since the publication of this paper, so the terms can now be corrected, and we can use such terms as globalization, for example, or internationalization. The next question is about the choice of our empirical data. As I said, these uh, leadership uh, positions in rankings, in newspaper rankings, the size of readership, ownership, this is a very useful recommendation and something we will consider in our future studies. Editions we chose have different sections and they do not focus solely on human rights problems. Human rights issues are also covered in Rosiska Gazeta. It's the official governmental newspaper. Yet it has a lot of coverage about human rights problems. In future, we will dedicate separate chapters to these issues. The next question is about the empirical study. Which empirical reference describe texts as texts uh, in human rights topics? We referred publications as human rights publications in accordance with a number of parameters. These parameters are well provided for in the dissertation. For example, the case with the pension reform. That's an example of uh, lawmaking activity. This enlightens pensioners on lawmaking procedures. Taxes for businesses, that's again something about lawmaking activities. The text about entrepreneurs. Also has uh, something that indicates this is about human rights problems. The texts about affordable housing are indicative of the 
human rights protection when it comes to the right to have your own housing. We find it useful, really, to compare texts from different editions. This would facilitate more complex conclusions. Conclusion seven is considered too simple. It's not only content analysis which allowed us to make this conclusion. It's based on the personal experience and interviews with journalists we conducted. The next question is about the shorter time spans in tables. Our time span is uh, from January 2011 to the end of 2017. January, that's more than six years. Manually, it was difficult to analyze the material. It's ineffective and would have taken huge time. So we used these shorter time spans of two months and we analyzed how much material was issued on human rights issues. This allowed us to uh, calculate the number of cases when human rights was in focus of these editions over these years. The question about the imbalance between the three chapters of the dissertation. Chapter three is the longest. This is because it focuses on the empirical data. Let me remind you of the agenda. Could you please be brief? You only have 15 minutes and we are running out of time. This chapter is most valuable practically. However, chapter three is not a run-on text. It has some subtitles and I hope these helped the reader to better understand the material it provides. I'm sorry I don't have time to cover all the questions. In, conclusions, in conclusion, I'd like to thank the members of the dissertation board once again, and I will consider all the recommendations in my future research. Could you please take a seat? Members of the dissertation board and attendees, now the floor can be given to non-board members. Is there anyone willing to take the floor? Uh, Professor Zhirkov, Doctor of Philology. It's a pleasure to take a floor and to speak in this uh, hall because that's really filled with history. I remember myself 50 years ago when I had a chance, um, still a student, to listen to many high-profile scholars. This is the hall where St. Petersburg spirit reigns. Look outside the window. This is a unique experience. The only place you can feel the same in is the hermitage. Well, getting back to the ground, I'd like to underscore the novelty of this study. Globalization of information space and information process. Recent advancements in technology, including the internet, the techniques of influencing human minds, the information war, all these phenomena has 
resulted in a crisis. In the crisis of management, human rights agenda is exceptionally acute these days. The internet has given freedom to the hurricane of information. Human rights agenda is absolutely crucial. I'm a historian, and I'm fully aware that there is not enough, there are not enough, there are not enough people fighting to reinstate human rights in this country. Let me refer to one of the recent publications. Lydia Suchova, a writer, wrote an article, Citizenship Instead of People, wrote, the history of journalism has something to teach authorities. The history of journalism is really enlightening in Russia, and it can alone solve a number of problems. Magina Matveva Melnik takes a historic stance on journalism, starting with its emergence and a lot of material is provided on the 1950s. This analysis is really important to further study these problematics. This period of Russian history of the great reforms of the 1960s, then the university was called the Empress University. Then we focused a lot on the interaction between the literary process and journalism. It showed the how political authorities and decision makers treated this cultural phenomenon. Why am I so serious about it? Over the time, early in the 20th century, the power was seized by the capital. I mean the early 20th century. This is when the paradigm was changed and this transformed journalism fundamentally. Print media as well. There was a lot of struggle and this is, a, this is common knowledge. Modern journalism is in crisis. I call it capitalist democracy. Uh, and I think that's important that lawyers should be, should consider the danger of journalist writings. Stilvan compares uh, the current situation to uh, an explosion. I'm really sorry, but you only have five minutes uh, according to the agenda. Well, the agenda is just a formality. I don't see people queuing up to take the floor. The situation I wanted to reflect on is very similar to what we're facing now in modern society. 
there is much in common between what we had between what we had then and what we have now. I lost my thought. During this information process, there is interaction between policymakers and human rights movements. The candidate focuses on the latter. In general, the dissertation shows the candidate's outlook, and it's really broad. The study is well argumented, and I believe Marina Matveva Melnik can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. I think it's advisable you should focus, you should broaden the topic of your research. Interaction between political decision makers and human rights movements. Currently, the society is fighting for the freedom of speech online. And sometimes it gives rise to conflicts. Let me quote uh, a deputy. When solving decision-making codex, let me quote the criminal code. I would like really to switch off the internet. Laws against the use of internet is a revenge on the young. This is something unacceptable for a lawmaker. If we refer to the lawmaking practical experience, then it will allow to solve current acute issues more effectively. Sorry for taking uh, too much time. That's fine. Is there anyone willing to take the floor among the not board members? And then, then I give the floor to Professor Volkowski, the CDS advisor. You're welcome to take the floor. Distinguished members of the dissertation board, colleagues, the topic of the CIDES by Marina Matveva Melnik is in line with her biography and her scholarly interests. I first met her when she was a second year student of the Faculty of Law. She took part in our traditional conference of young scholars. She had a publication in the proceedings of this conference. And this is, it was the start of our collaboration. After she graduated, she was really active as a journalism. She conducted studies in human rights the knowledge and the experience she obtained allowed her to become an in-house journalist of a periodical. She consults colleagues on human rights issues. As a postgraduate student, she was an independent scholar. She was single-minded. She used periodicals as the source of uh, the practical data. It allowed her to make relevant and effective conclusions. All of them you can find in the dissertation. 
human rights journalism still remains little studied. So the study of Magda Melnik is a unique research, and it's really relevant. When working on the dissertation, she was really interested in academic debates and discussions. Her report attracted interest at one of the seminars in, Ber in Berlin. It was about transnational prospects. She was invited to take part in a conference in Stockholm in a number of other regional, national, international conferences and seminars. She was instrumental in organizing a seminar, Russian journalism, journalist, mission is possible, and other events organized by our department. Her research findings were published in three scholarly editions. She is a prize winner of a Russian contest, the best article 2014, organized by the Concept magazine. It was about the specific of human rights agenda as reflected in mass media. Today's dissertation characterizes and reviews Marina Matveva Melnik as a really interested and brave scholar. She writes about the new trends in journalism. She writes about the little studied material. She writes about something that requires further research. Thank you. Colleagues, according to the agenda, we are now starting the discussion with the board members. The discussion is about uh, the issue on conferring or non-conferring the academic degree. Non-board members are kindly asked to leave the hall. Remember to switch off the broadcast.
Заседание продолжается. Прошу включить. We continue the panel session. Please switch on the broadcast. Let's make sure that it's working and there are no technical issues. We are moving towards the highlights of the panel session. Distinguished members of the dissertation board, I put to the vote the issue of conferring the academic degree in conformity with item 23 of the relevant legislation the academic degree the decision of the dissertation board is positive provided it has received 50 percent of the votes from non fewer than three members of the dissertation board i would like Yugi Kluiv to give his viewpoint. Distinguished Chair and attendees, I will be brief. Maria Matvey-Melnik can be awarded the academic degree of candidate of philology, specialization 10.01.10, journalism. Professor Pronin, I'm not at all original. Marina Matvey can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. Thank you. Svetlana Urazova, what is your opinion? I will support my colleagues. I'm for conferring the academic degree of the candidate of philology. My position is that the candidate can be awarded the degree, the degree of the candidate in philology. It wasn't difficult to count votes. Four out of the four present board members, four have voted for confirming the degree. There is no one who voted against or abstained from voting. So Marina Matveo Melnik is awarded the academic degree of the candidate of philology. Specialization 10.01.10, journalism. My congratulations to Marina Matveva Melnik. And it's now time for the closing speech made by the candidate of philology. This is something off the cuff. I did not prepare the closing speech. First off, I'd like to thank all those who have been helping me and supporting me during these paths uh, while I'm working on the station. I really appreciate the contribution made by my thesis uh, advisor. I'd like to thank my parents who have been supporting me financially over all these years of working under my study. I'm thankful really to my husband, who is a journalist, for his moral support. Both my parents are also candidates of science. I'd like to thank the board members for joining the board for the interest to uh, the interest in my study for your useful criticism recommendations and positive remarks i'd like to thank uh, the professor from poland who wasn't able to be present i will thank her in person i do understand that it wasn't easy for her to read this dissertation in English, which is not a native language for her. Still, her advice is also invaluable, and it's interesting to receive a report from an international scholar. I'd like to thank Professor Zherkov for supporting me today. It was interesting to hear his opinion as a historian specialist in the history of journalism and I'm thankful to 
the members, members of the department that organizes uh, defense for their patients. Uh, thanks to one and all. My congratulations again and congratulate each of us because it's the first defense according to the new regulations of St. Petersburg State University. I'd like to wish everyone good luck. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Let's